Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning, dear students. Today's topic for lecture, Early Gandhian Struggles. It includes the three struggles of Mahatma Gandhi like Chambaran, Keda Sadhyagraga, Ahmadabad Mill Strike. And then we will proceed to study Ravalata Sadhyagraga and Jalin Balabak Massacre. First of all, we will be studying the first local issue Mahatma Gandhi intervened. It was Chambaran. Chambaran formed the Tirhat division of North Bihar. The European planters had been started the cultivation of indigo since the beginning of the 19th century. Since the beginning of the 19th century, the European planters had started the cultivation of indigo in Chambayar. The system of cultivation existed in Chambayar and came into known as Tingadiya. Thingadiya system. This was the system of cultivation existed in Chambaran of Tirhat division of North Bihar. It was a kind of indirect cultivation. Indirect cultivation. This kind of indirect cultivation of Thingadiya system existed in Chambaran. Now, we will be looking into the characteristic features of the Thingadiya system of cultivation. Under this system of cultivation, the peasants leased land from landowners and the peasants were required to make an annual advance payment. An annual advance payment was made by the peasants for leasing out land from the landowners. And an agreement was entered into between the peasant and the land owner. Under the terms of this agreement entered into between the peasant and the land owner, the peasants were required to cultivate indigo at the three twentieth of land, it is the most fertile place of the land leased out. The peasants were required to cultivate indigo, but in 1916, synthetic indigo, German synthetic indigo. German synthetic indigo was heavily imported to India, following which there were no buyers for indigo produced in the country. However, under the terms of agreement entered into between the peasant and the land owner against the payment of annual advancement, the peasants were required to cultivate indigo. The peasants were not to release it from the agreement. 
the peasants were forced to cultivate indigo at a loss. In the meanwhile, the peasant from the peasants forced to pay illegal dues, illegal dues to the landowners in order to release from the obligation of cultivation of indigo. This was the issue at Chambar. Under the Tingadiya system, the peasants were required to cultivate three twentieth of part of the land indigo. In other remaining areas, they used to cultivate food grains. But in 1916, because of the import of German synthetic indigo, there were no buyers for indigos produced at Chambaran. However, the peasants were forced to cultivate indigo at a loss. Then later, the landowners collected illegal dues from the peasants to release from the obligation of cultivating indigo at Chambaran. This was the issue at Chambaran. It was Rajkumar Shukla. Rajkumar Shukal, who brought Mahatma Gandhi into Chambaran issue. And when Rajkumar Shukal brought Mahatma Gandhi to investigate the grievances of the peasants at Chambaran, once Mahatma Gandhi reached at Motihari in Bihar. Motihari in Bihar, Mahatma Gandhi was arrested by the district administration. District administration arrested Mahatma Gandhi. But with the intervention of the provincial government, Mahatma Gandhi was released from jail and he was allowed to inv investigate the grievances or the plights of the peasants at Chambaran. Then Mahatma Gandhi reached Chambaran and investigated the plights of the peasants at Chambaran. Government appointed a Chambaran Agrarian Committee. Chambaran Agrarian Committee was appointed by the government. Mahatma Gandhi was one of his members. Mahatma Gandhi with one of the members. This Chambaran Agrarian Committee recommended that 25 percent of the illegal dues collected by the land donates from the peasants would be refunded. 25 percent of the illegal dues collected by the land donates from the peasants would immediately be refunded. Following the recommendations of Chambaran Agrarian Committee, a Chambaran Agrarian Act was also passed. Chambaran Agrarian Act, Chambaran Agrarian Act was passed in 1917. There were certain leaders who supported Mahatma Gandhi in the Chambaran Sadhyagraha, Rajendra Prasad, Gorak Prasad, and Kribalini. They were the leaders who supported Mahatma Gandhi in the Chambaran issue. The second local issue, Mahatma Gandhi 
இன்டர்வின் வாஸ் கேதா சத்யாகிரகா கேதா சத்யாகிரகா கேதா இஸ் ஃபர்டைல் பிளேஸ் இன் குஜராத் in kheda the main cultivation included food grains food grains tobacco and cotton these were the major items cultivated in kheda and these products were marketed at ahmedabad but in 1917 due to heavy rainfall due to heavy rainfall the crop got damaged crop damaged in kheda in 1917 due to heavy rainfall the kharif crop was damaged in 1917 due to heavy rainfall the kharif crop in kheda got damaged since the persons the peasants were not in a position to pay land tax the peasants demanded that they would be exempted from the payment of land tax because of the crop failure the peasants demanded that peasants demanded exemption of payment of land tax payment of tax the peasants demanded remission of land tax because of the crop failure in the land revenue court in the land revenue court there was a provision to remit payment of taxes if the crop failure was more than 25% of the normal production if the crop damage was more than 25% of the normal production total remission of taxes would be made to the peasants vj patel and G. K. Parekh, two bad states from Bombay. They were the bad states from Bombay. They inquired about the extent of the crop failure, and they found that the no the failure was more than twenty five percent of the normal production. So. the peasants were entitled remission from the payment of land tax but district administration was not ready district administration the district administration did not permit any kind of reduction in quantum of taxes to be paid by the peasants the district administration expressed the view that it was not a spontaneous uprising of the persons but outsiders organized by gujarat safa of which mahatma gandhi was then the president is president
or the home rule ligates the district administration was not ready to make reduction in tax the district administration argued that it was not the uprising of the peasants but it was organized by outsiders who were the outsiders gujarat safa and the home rule leaguers the district administration expressed that this uprising was organized by gujarat safa and home rule leaguers but in practice neither gujarat safa nor home rule leaguers did involve in the organization of peasant agitation in kheda it was organized by mohanlal pandey a village leader in kheda village leader from kheda actually organized actually organized the person agitation then mahatma gandhi was invited into this issue mahatma gandhi started satyagraha movement on 22nd march 1918 on 22 march 1918 mahatma gandhi started satyagraha movement demanding either the reduction of tax or complete remission of tax it was organized at nadiyath satyagraha movement was started by Satyagraha movement was started by Mahatma Gandhi at Nadiyat on 22nd March 1918 to redress the grievances of the peasants. And Hindu Lal Ajinik, Hindu Lal Ajinik, Vallabhai Patel. Hindu Lal Ajinik, Vallabhai Patel, and Anasuya Sarafai. Anasuya Sarafai helped Mahatma Gandhi in the organization of K Satyagraha movement at Kheda. Hindu Lal Ajinik, Vallabhai Patel, and Anasuya Sarafai helped Mahatma Gandhi to organize Satyagraha movement in. Kheda. On twenty one April, nineteen eighteen, two thousand three hundred and thirty seven peasants took the pledge that they would not pay land tax. On twenty one April, nineteen eighteen, two thousand. Three hundred and thirty-seven persons took the pledge that they would not pay land tax. Following which, the British government decided to collect land tax only from those persons who were able to pay land tax. Only those persons who were able. who were able to pay land tax this was the second local issue mahatma gandhi intervened this second local issue also ended in success now we are studying the third local issue in which mahatma gandhi intervened it was ahmedabad mill strike
Ahmedabad mill strike. This was the third local issue Mahatma Gandhi intervened. Ahmedabad during this time was one of the large industrial towns, large industrial town having a large number of textile mills. In 1917, the largest concentration of textile mills. It was a larger industrial town having a number of textile mills. In 1917, plague broke out in Ahmedabad. Once the epidemic broke out, the workers left the mills in Ahmedabad, leading to shortage of shortage of workers, shortage of workers in mills. In 1917, plague broke out in Ahmedabad. Following the outbreak of this epidemic, the workers left Ahmedabad creating shortage of workers. Then what did millionaires do? They introduced plague bonus, plague bonus in order to attract the workers to this mills, the mill owners introduced plague bonus. It was over and above than their regular salary and it was fixed at 70 percent. They would get their regular salary plus 75 percent bonus. 75 percent over and above their regular salary was given as bonus. Why did plaque bonus given? It was to attract the workers to the mills, plaque bonus was introduced and given to the workers. Around 22,996 persons died in Ahmedabad in 1917-18. For the number of persons died due to plague was 22,996 persons during the period between 1917 1918. Once the plague epidemic receded, the mill owners stopped. Mill owners stopped the bonus. Once plague was over, the mill owners stopped the plague of bonus, but the mill workers were not ready to accept. They demanded that 50 percent over and above their regular salary should be given as bonus. The reason put forward by the mill workers was that because of the first world war, it was during this period first world war was going on from 1914 to 1918. Due to the first world war, 
the prices of essential commodities went up. So, a bonus of 50 percent should be given to the mill workers. This was the response of the mill workers, but mill owners were not ready to give 50 percent as bonus to meet the rising prices of essential commodities due to the first world war, but the mill owners were ready to pay only 20 percent bonus. But the workers were not satisfied with this 20 percent bonus, they were eagerly arguing for 50 percent bonus over and above their regular salary. This was the issue at Ahmedabad mill. Ambalal Sarafai She was one of the mill owner in Ahmedabad and had a reverence for Gandhi and financially contributed to the ashram of Mahatma Gandhi. From Ambalal Sarafai, Mahatma Gandhi studied the problems faced by the mill workers. From Ambalal Sarafai, she was one of the mill owners of Ahmedabad. From her, Mahatma Gandhi came into a detailed understanding of the flights of the mill workers in Ahmedabad. And she decided to invite Mahatma Gandhi into this issue. Following the invitation of Ambalal Sarafai, Mahatma Gandhi reached Ahmedabad to study the problems of the mill workers in Ahmedabad. Once Mahatma Gandhi reached Ahmedabad, he discussed the problems with the mill workers and both the workers and mill owners decided to start a board of arbitration, a board of arbitration. It was decided to start a board of arbitration. Chairman was the collector, district collector was the chairman of this board of arbitration. In addition to that, three mill workers and three mill owners were included this in this board of arbitration. A board of arbitration was constituted with district collector as the chairman. In addition to district collector, there were three mill owners and there were three mill workers. The interesting fact was that Mahatma Gandhi was included in this board of arbitration as one of the worker Mahatma Gandhi was included in the board of arbitration as one of the mill workers but the mill owners were ready to accept the representation of Mahatma Gandhi as one of the workers in the board of arbitration. 
they unilaterally withdraw the mill workers unilaterally withdraw from this board of arbitration saying that they could not consider Mahatma Gandhi as the representatives of the workers nor did he muster the mandate of the workers. The mill owners declared lockout lockout on 22 February 1980 with Mahatma Gandhi as one of the, however with Mahatma Gandhi as one of the members a board of arbitration was created to settle the issue for the mill owners and mill workers amicably the mill owners withdrew unilaterally from the board of arbitration saying that they could not consider Mahatma Gandhi as one of the representatives of the workers and they declared lockout on 22nd February 1918. In such a situation Mahatma Gandhi made a detailed study of the grievances of the workers and the condition of these mills. After making a detailed study of the condition of the mill owners and the mill workers, he expressed that the workers should demand 35 percent as bonus. Initially, the workers demanded 50 percent as bonus, but this time after making a detailed study of the entire problems, Mahatma Gandhi came with the plan that the workers should demand 35 percent over and above their regular salary as bonus. But the mill owners were not ready to pay even 35 percent as bonus. And Gandhi started a Satyagraha movement. Mill owners ended the lockout on 12 March 1918. Even 35 percent as bonus was not acceptable to the mill owners. Hence, Mahatma Gandhi started Satyagraha movement. Satyagraha movement. Following which the mill owners ended the lockout on 12 March 1918. On 15 March 1918, Mahatma Gandhi started a fast. On 15 March 1918, Mahatma Gandhi started fast. On 18 March 1918, a settlement was arrived at between. Settlement arrived. On 18 March 1918, a settlement was arrived at between the mill owners and the mill workers. What was the settlement? The settlement was that on the first day of their work, the workers would get 55 percent as bonus. On the second day, they would receive 20 percent as bonus as earlier expressed by the mill owners. But from the third day to till arbitration award, till the board of arbitration took a final decision, they would receive 75 percent 
upon us. This was the settlement arrived at between mill owners and mill workers on 18 March 1918. Under the, under the settlement, on the first day of work, the workers would receive 35 percent bonus. On the second day, they would receive 25 percent bonus. But from the third day, they would receive 75 per, 75 sorry 70 27 point 5 percent bonus. From the third day onwards, they would receive 27 point 5 percent bonus. This was a settlement arrived at between mill owners and mill workers on 18 March 1918. The final settlement was arrived with the award of the board of arbitration. Board of arbitration. Board of arbitration awarded that awarded that twenty five percent bonus should be given to the mill workers. This was the decision made by board of arbitration. It expressed that the mill workers should be given thirty five percent bonus as which had earlier been expressed by Mahatma Gandhi. These were the three local issues in which Mahatma Gandhi intervened Champaran, Keda and Ahmedabad mill strike. Now, we are moving to study the fourth Sadhyagraha Mahatma Gandhi organized. It was Raulat Sadhyagraha. Raulat Sadhyagraha. First of all, we will be looking into the circumstances behind the start of Raulat Sadhyagraha by Mahatma Gandhi. In 1917, the British government appointed a committee under Justice Sidney Raulat. Justice Sidney Rowlett to investigate revolutionary crimes in India. Revolutionary crimes in India and it is suggest remedial measures for the effective suppression of the revolutionary crimes. In 1917, Justice Sidney Rowlett was appointed by the government of India to investigate revolutionary crimes in the country and suggest measures for its effective suppression. Justice Sidney Rowlett, who submitted his report, and based on the report submitted by Justice Sidney Rowlett, two bills. Two bills were prepared by the government of India and piloted in the Imperial Legislative Council. Based on the recommendation made by Justice Sidney Rowlett, two bills were prepared and introduced in the Imperial Legislative Council by the government of India on 6 February 1919. Now, we are going to analyze the major provisions of, of included in this bill. The bill aimed to introduce in India wartime restrictions permanent. One, what were the provisions included in these bills introduced in the Imperial Legislative Council? Revolutionary crimes would be tried in a special court consisting of three high court judges.
they are all revolutionary crimes would be heard in a special court consisting of three high court judges. Second provision no appeal, there was no provision for appeal against the pronouncement of this special court. Three, all the proceedings of the court would be in camera, it means that the cases would be heard in the chamber of the judge, not in the open court, not in open court, but only in the chamber of the judge the cases were heard. It would make admissible evidences not come under Indian Evidence Act. It also used to admit evidences which normally did not come under the Indian Evidence Act. 5. It would empower the police to search any place or arrest any person without a warrant. Under this bill, the police were empowered to search any place or arrest any person without warrant. 6. Detention without a trial, detention without a trial for 2 years, a person could be detained for a maximum period of 2 years without any trial whatsoever. These were the provisions included in these bills. Gandhi started a Satyagraha Safa Gandhi started a Satyagraha Safa against these Raulat bills on 24 February 1919. To protest against the Raulat bill, Mahatma Gandhi started Satyagraha Safa on 24 February 1919. Despite stiff opposition from different parts of India, one of the bills, two bills were piloted in, in the Imperial Estate Council of which one of the bills passed into act and it got the assent of the Viceroy on 21 March 1919. Viceroy gave assent to one of the Raulat bills passed in the Imperial Legislative Council despite stiff resistance from different parts of the country against the Raulat bills and now Mahatma Gandhi started Satyagraha movement against this, but the moderate leaders yes, Surendranada Banerjee, D. E. Vacha, Tej Bahadur Sapru, T. B. Sapru. They opposed it. Surendranada Banerjee and D. E. Vacha and Tej Bahadur Sapru 
opposed the decision of Mahatma Gandhi to start Satyagraha movement against the Raulat Act. They feared that it would seriously affect forthcoming constitutional reforms in the same year. The Government of India Act 1919 was introduced in May 1919. These moderate leaders feared that launching of Satyagraha movement against the British this time would affect the constitutional reforms of the country. So, they opposed the decision of Mahatma Gandhi to start Satyagraha movement against the Rawalat bill. Others felt that the ordinary people would find it difficult ordinary people would find it difficult to disobey the Rawlath bill disobey the Rawlath bill civilly or on a non-violent mode. The ordinary people would be in a state of difficult mode to fight against this legislation on a non-violent methods. Any person she started Home Rule League in 1916 stated that there was nothing in the act there was nothing in the act to oppose it to oppose it civilly there was nothing in the act to oppose civilly this was the statement made by Annie Besant but the younger and radical elements in Home Rule League enthusiastically supported Mahatma Gandhi in the Satyagraha movement against the Raulath bill. Gandhi inaugurated the Satyagraha movement by calling upon the entire citizen, entire people of the country to observe Hartal on 30 March. 1919. Mahatma Gandhi inaugurated the Satyagraha movement against the Raulath Act by calling upon the people of India to observe a Hartal on 30 March 1919. But later, Mahatma Gandhi changed the date of Hartal to 6 April, 6 April 1919. But in Delhi, but in Delhi, the Hartal was observed on 30 March, 30 March 1919. In this Hartal in Delhi, on 30 March, six persons died, six persons died in police firing. In all other cities, Hartal was observed on 6 April 1919. Except Delhi, in all other places, Hartal was observed on 6 April 1919. Mahatma Gandhi expressed that the Hartal was a magnificent success. Magnificent success. Both the Hartals observed on 6th April and 30 March were magnificent success. Mahatma Gandhi then selected the prohibited literature by the British government for massive sale. Massive sale of 
prohibited literature by the British government in defiance of British administration in India. Hindu Swaraj, it was a book written by Mahatma Gandhi. It was banned by the Bombay government, banned by Bombay government in 1910. Gandhi decided the massive sale of the Hindu Swaraj against the British government. Hindu Swaraj was selected for the massive sale against the British government. This book penned by Mahatma Gandhi had been banned by the Bombay government earlier. It was in 1910, it was banned by the Bombay government. On 8th April, Mahatma Gandhi left Bombay to organize Satyagraha movement in Delhi and Punjab. On 8th April 1919, Mahatma Gandhi left Bombay to Delhi to organize Satyagraha movement in Delhi and Punjab. The British government considered that the entry of Mahatma Gandhi in Punjab was dangerous. The entry of Mahatma Gandhi in Punjab was dangerous by the British administration. Hence, Mahatma Gandhi was arrested at Palwal near Delhi and sent back to Bombay. He was not allowed to go to Punjab because his entry into Punjab was considered as dangerous by the British administration. So, he was arrested at Palwal and sent back to Bombay. Punjab met worst scenes of violence during this time and the civil authority lost control and the military took over the administration. The Punjab met violent scenes between the Satyagrahis and the police. On 10 April 1919, two local leaders, Kichilu and Satipal, on 10th April 1919, two local leaders were also arrested, Kichilu and Satipal. In order to protest against the arrest of the popular leaders, the people met at Jalin Valabak Maidan. The people were not aware of the banning of meetings and processions. In order to register their protest against the arrest of Mahatma Gandhi, Kichilu and Satipal, the people assembled at Jalin Valabak Maidan. This time General Dyer who reached there and without giving even a slightest warning, he ordered his troop to fire on the people. Jalinwala back Maidan was surrounded by buildings on three sides and there was only one entrance. So, it took a heavy toll of life. According to British official figures, the number of deaths was 379. It was the 
ब्रिटिश ऑफिशियल फिगर बट द एक्चुअल नंबर ऑफ डेथ वॉज बियॉन्ड वन थाउजेंड द अनऑफिशियल फिगर वेंट अबाउ वन थाउजेंड शॉकड बाई दिस इंसिडेंट महात्मा गांधी कॉल्ड ऑफ सत्याग्रह रावल सत्याग्रह ऑन एटीन एप्रिल कॉल्ड ऑफ सत्याग्रह मूवमेंट वॉज कॉल्ड ऑफ ऑन एटीन एप्रिल नाइनटीन नाइनटीन बाई महात्मा गांधी बट वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ द रावल सत्याग्रह वॉज emergence of gandhi as an all india leader as an all india leader this was the main consequence of the raulat satyagraha now the major questions which are likely to be posed from this topic one explain the flights of grievances of persons at chambaran question number 2 examine the main consequence examine the main consequence of raulat satyagraha question number 3 what were the provisions of raulat act what were the provisions of raulat act question number 4 what were the problems what were the problems of the workers at ahmedabad mill Mills. These are the questions which to which you are expected to answer. Now, this is the end of this lecture. Thank you, students.